My name is Carl, and I have been coming to community for about six months now. The Youth Plus conversation to me really was an eye-opener that I could really start becoming accountable in my spiritual journey and almost gauging the progress I am making over time and opening me up to the possibility to actually surrender to God and see what He could do through that surrender and being vulnerable. Initially, I didn't want to do it. I, I was a little bit hesitant when I ultimately decided to do it. I didn't, I didn't feel like it was too difficult. The biggest takeaway from my conversation with Doug was the realization that I didn't have to do life on my own and that I could truly begin to be accountable and be vulnerable to spiritual leadership. That is something that I really didn't feel like I needed to before, but the U Plus journey really opened me up to the fact that, yes, that is something that would help me spiritually. The exciting thing about the goals that I set for U Plus, for U Plus is the fact that I could now look back a year from now and actually gauge how, how far I've come and almost kind of record my progress in, in this U Plus journey. To me, the U Plus journey is something that I am excited about and I am really glad that I did it. I love seeing how U Plus discipleship conversations are making an impact in the lives of community attenders. Yeah, Serene, you were a part of the development team that helped yeah. create this U Plus curriculum. Mm -hmm. What's your experience been like getting to see people actually go through U Plus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been awesome. I love that since the beginning of U Plus, it's all about how we can come alongside each other and help one another grow in our discipleship journey of following Jesus. And for many of us, that has looked different. For some, it's meant a step of baptism. For others, uh, we've started ministries or churches. Every story is unique, uh, but at the core of it, it's for everyone, whether you are just curious about following Jesus or you're ready to go deeper. I've loved hearing all the stories of how God's showing up in people's lives through these U Plus conversations. Yeah, I love that. As someone who's new around here, I'm enjoying U Plus because it gives me a tangible next step. It's easy for me to identify areas of my life where I'm looking for growth. What's not always so easy is knowing what to do next. And U Plus for me was so helpful and establishing that next step. That's so great to hear, Chris. Welcome, welcome to Community Online. I'm Serene, and this is Chris, and we're so glad to be joining you today. Here at Community, we're committed to helping people find their way back to God. And if you're brand new here today, welcome. You've taken your first step, and we'd love to help you take the next one. Simply scan the QR code to create your account or say hello in the chat or request prayer. We would love to connect with you today. Yeah, and if you haven't had a U Plus Discipleship Conversation this year, do me a favor and head to uplus.info to begin your journey or just drop us a comment. We would love to follow up with you and help you get started. Today, we're continuing our series, Encounter. Co-founding pastor John Ferguson will be bringing us the message today, and I think it's gonna be a good one. But before we head there, let's give back to God. You can give online or set up your recurring gift by going to givenow.cc or by texting the word GIVE to 331-226-1686. Just follow the instructions on the screen. Each week at Community, we have this opportunity to give back to God through an act of generosity. And in the verse, the wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. The psalmist draws a contrast between borrowers and givers. He says, the wicked are those who borrow but do not repay. But the mark of someone who does what is right is that they give generously. So I invite you right now to follow the way of the righteous and give. And as you give, let's get ready to hear from God through this next chapter in this powerful series. One of the most exciting and terrifying experiences you can have in life is when you go all in. When you throw caution to the wind, step out in faith, uh, do something that demands wholehearted effort and high levels of risk. Uh, going all in might have been when you signed that 12-month lease for your very first apartment or put down your life savings to get a mortgage to buy your first home. Or maybe going all in for you is when you stepped up to the starting line for your first five or 10K or 26.2 mile marathon. You paid your registration fee, did your best to prepare, 
but now you're about to take those first strides. You were all in. Uh, For some, going all in might have been that romantic moment when you said yes to spending the rest of your life with the person you love. Uh, One of the most exciting and terrifying experiences you can have in life is when you go all in. A number of years back, my wife, Lisa, and our two kids, Graham and Chloe, made the decision to move from Naperville into the city to help start new churches in neighborhoods that desperately need a life-giving church like what we had experienced at Community in Naperville. And we felt like we were going all in. Uh, We knew this couldn't be a half-hearted effort, that it was risky for our family and would require more of us than we would have at times. But we did it anyway. And it was scary. Uh, There were times when I wondered what people would think. Uh, Our kids were just entering their teen years. Uh, We loved where we lived. This was a massive change. Uh, We called it an adventure. We believed God wanted us to do it. And it definitely felt like we were making the choice to go all in. Uh, We continue our series today, Encounters with Jesus. And all throughout this series, we're looking at encounters people had with Jesus described in the Gospel of Mark, the second book in the New Testament. As we dig into these scriptures, I want you to imagine you are in the shoes, or should I say sandals, of these first disciples. Or in the case of today's story, this woman who anoints Jesus with a very costly perfume. And I want us to try to understand what this encounter meant for those who were actually there on that day. And then consider what this encounter can teach us about what it looks like to wholeheartedly follow Jesus. I also want to let you know that today is a special day we call Baptism Sunday. It's an opportunity for people to publicly declare their allegiance to Jesus, to say, I am all in. And in this case, all in means going all in and under water, just like people did in Jesus' day when they chose to commit their lives to him. And I'm excited to let you know that a number of people have already planned in advance to go all in through baptism today. But I also want you to know that if you have yet to be baptized, we would love to help you take that step. So as we walk through this story, my prayer is that you will do what a disciple does. You will hear from God and simply do what he's inviting you to do. And if you sense that he's asking you to be baptized today, then my prayer is that you will do just that, okay? Before we continue, I want us to pause and pray. Father God, uh, we come to you today, and uh, we're going to dig deep into your scripture of an incredible story of a woman who went all in. And God, my prayer is that we would be open to your Spirit's prompting so that we too could respond and be all in with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we are looking at an encounter with Jesus that took place during the week just before his death. Three days prior to this encounter, Jesus entered Jerusalem to the sounds of cheering crowds and waving palm branches, which is why this day is called Palm Sunday. While this encounter was in the same week, it was a much quieter moment at a meal in someone's home. Jesus is gathered with his disciples and some religious leaders when something completely unexpected happens. Uh, Let's take a look. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from essence of nard. (laughs) Imagine trying to advertise that perfume, essence of nard. (laughs) Anyway, she broke open the jar and poured the perfume over Jesus' head. Now, there's a lot happening in just this verse. So let's pause for a moment and take a closer look. The nard within this alabaster jar that this woman broke open was incredibly expensive. The value of the oil would have equaled a year's wages. This bottle of perfume was was likely passed down to this woman through generations. There's even a good chance it was part of her dowry for marriage. It represented uh, financial stability, social standing. In, In today's terms, it was like this woman had just emptied out her 401k. It was clearly an extravagant act of worship towards Jesus. And so you would think uh, those who witnessed this would have been inspired by this incredible act, right? But that's not exactly how it went down. Look what happens next. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. 
It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. A somewhat shocking response, huh? Uh, they were indignant? But can you imagine being so consumed with the presence of Jesus like this woman was that money has lost all value to you? Imagine that. I mean, generosity on that scale is so challenging, isn't it? Giving 10% of our income back to God feels like a big step. And yet this woman goes all in. She gives everything to Jesus. But rather than seeing the significance of the moment, those in the room seem to completely miss the point. And while we might be taken back by their reaction, I wonder if there was something deeper behind this response. In fact, is it possible that maybe we're not so different from them? I mean, let's be honest, okay? When you see someone share a story about a major life change as a result of finding their way back to God, do you, do you ever feel just slightly cynical rather than fully celebrating what a person has experienced? Or maybe when you hear about someone being financially generous or, or witness someone being openly expressive during worship, do you ever sense just a tinge of maybe comparison creeping in, a, a feeling of awkwardness or even insecurity? Can I go out on a limb by pointing out something to the men today? In this scene, notice that it's a, a woman who is ready and willing to go all in for Jesus. Well, the guys in the room seem to lean back and get a little uncomfortable with how openly all in she's actually being in this moment. Here's why I point this out. I would suggest that some of us guys have been leaning back for far too long because we think to ourselves, I would never do something as undignified and all in as what this woman is doing. Maybe even when it comes to something like baptism, you've thought to yourself, well, I would never get into that tub. Soaking wet, no way. Tell everyone I know that I'm all in for Jesus. Raise my hands in worship, give 10%. Uh, that just feels a little too extreme. I couldn't help it. In thinking about this, I was reminded of what happened in January during the Chiefs-Bills playoff game. Do you remember this? When Jason Kelsey, the brother of Travis Kelsey, yes, Taylor Swift's boyfriend, uh, decided to go all in in the skybox. Do you remember that moment? I point this out because, guys, sometimes we do go all in. <laughs> and if we're willing to go all in for something like football, then certainly we can learn something from this woman who went all in out of her love for Jesus. So the people in the room didn't appreciate what was happening at the time. But how does Jesus respond to this woman and her critics? Jesus replied, leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you and you can help them whenever you want to, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. And well, here we are, remembering it and discussing it. And Jesus tells the disciples, the poor will always be with you. Why does he say that? Uh, clearly the poor matter to Jesus. In fact, Jesus' whole life was spent connecting to those on the margins. The disciples were with Jesus time and again as he modeled how to care for others. I think what Jesus is doing here is challenging his disciples to stop worrying about the logistics. He's calling them out for allowing the poor to become a prop, a means to deflect the power and intensity of this woman's devotion. And if you think about it, this happens today, doesn't it? especially in politics. You know, instead of viewing people as people, they can end up being used as props to support our platform or agenda. And you know what Jesus says? He says, stop, stop, stop using people as props. Pay attention to the devotion of this woman. So if we wanna go all in as disciples of Jesus, what can we learn from this woman's example? What exactly was the woman expressing to Jesus in this encounter? Well, first, the woman recognized who Jesus was 
And she was responding with, thank you. Thank you. That jar had value. In fact, it was extremely valuable. No one would have expected this woman to bring out this precious bottle of perfume and then break the whole bottle in response to Jesus. But that's exactly what she does. Why? Because she wants to say thank you. Thank you to Jesus. And it's a response of gratitude to who Jesus is and what he's done. And she gives it all. A theologian and New Testament scholar, Morna Hooker, points out, she breaks the jar and pours out everything she has in gratitude to Jesus. And you know, we can respond like this to Jesus too. In the midst of our ordinary lives, we can bring everything we have to Jesus and simply say, thank you. But there's also something a bit mysterious about the woman's response to Jesus. Uh, remember what Jesus said in verse eight? He said, she has done what she could and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. Uh, some scholars suggest that this woman is the only follower of Jesus who understood the implications of his teachings, that he was actually going to die. And so she seized this opportunity to express her love to him. And that culture, People would typically be anointed after death for their burial. But we know that this story doesn't end with Jesus' death. He would not be anointed for burial after he dies because Jesus defeats death. Instead, the woman anoints Jesus before his death in preparation for what was to come. And this act of love and devotion, the woman also demonstrates her grief that Jesus was going to actually die that through death, Jesus accomplished what we could not. He made a way for us to be restored into a right relationship with God. And we too, like this woman, can respond to Jesus by saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you agonized on the cross for me. I'm sorry for not fully following you. We can acknowledge whatever it is that's keeping us from being all in for the one who gave his life for us and repent for not giving him our complete devotion. There's one more way this woman responded to Jesus. Her act of anointing, it would have been familiar to those who watched this encounter. In fact, it would have carried great significance. In the Old Testament, if you were to become king, it was a common practice for a prophet to anoint you with oil as a sign that you had been set apart for this task. Uh, the action said something about both the person performing the anointing and the person being anointed. This woman acts with bold faith and with authority given to her by God to publicly proclaim Jesus as Messiah. She was saying to Jesus, you are my king. Church family, this right here is what all in devotion looks like. When we truly encounter Jesus, we can't help but respond with overwhelming gratitude and we say thank you. We acknowledge anything that's keeping us from complete devotion to Jesus, and we say, I am sorry. And finally, we give him our full allegiance when we say, Jesus, you are my king. If you can say those words with conviction, would you repeat them after me? Thank you. I'm sorry. You are my king. I mentioned earlier that today is Palm Sunday, the day that starts what we call Holy Week when Jesus entered Jerusalem for the last time. His arrival in the city is known as the triumphal entry because he was welcomed as a conquering king, crowds waving palm branches, people laying their garments on the ground and shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It was just five days before Jesus would be crucified, seven days before he would overcome death and bring resurrection life to all of mankind. And in between the excitement of Palm Sunday and Jesus' death on Friday were the actions of this woman declaring her all-in faith in the one true King of Kings, her Messiah and Savior, Jesus. But I got to confess, had I been there to witness the actions of this woman, I can't help but wonder, would I have been like the men in that room who seemed to play it safe? 
held back and thought what she did was just way over the top. Maybe. But I also have to believe she might have been thinking some of the you know same thoughts that hold me back from going all in at times. People might think I'm crazy. <laughs> like maybe I'm taking this Jesus stuff a bit too far. And then what if I do go all in and I blow it? You know, again, fail, fall on my face. Then people just think it was all a charade. Besides all that, going all in like that, it doesn't really fit me. I hardly do anything impulsively. I'm way more calculated than that. But apparently, this woman didn't care about her reputation. She wasn't concerned about what others would say. You know what? I think at that moment, all she saw was Jesus. She saw him and recognized here is her savior, her friend and king. And she wants to break the jar, the most valuable and precious thing she has. And she wants to give it to him because that's how much she loves him. Here's the deal. Uh, earlier, we told you that this is Baptism Sunday. And I believe that for some here today, your baptism could be your break the jar moment. This could be your time to just get a little crazy and undignified. I mean, anybody who's been baptized will tell you there is nothing impressive about getting dunked in public. It is a break the jar moment. And, you know, you may have some of the same fears or reservations about getting baptized that this woman may have had about breaking that jar. What will people think? Isn't this just a little over the top? I mean, what if I get baptized and still struggle with the same stuff that's been holding me back for years? Look, baptism doesn't mean you're perfect. It doesn't make you perfect. As a matter of fact, it just means that you know you're not. Hear me on this. In the same way, a broken bottle of perfume was a way for this woman to say that she was going all in for Jesus. You taking this step of baptism is a way for you to say you are all in for Jesus. And this is not about you doing something to earn your way into God's good graces. There's nothing you could do to earn his love. He loves you as you are, and he simply wants you. The Apostle Paul writes this about baptism. We were therefore buried with him, buried with Jesus, through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. You know, I was 10 years old when I was baptized. I will never forget it. And sure, life has been a lot more complicated after my baptism than it was before. I was only 10. But you know what? It is a moment where I can look back and know that with all the courage a 10-year-old could ever muster, I walked down the aisle of my home church and broke the jar. I was baptized and declared that I was going all in. And you know what? It was my way of saying to Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving your life for me. I'm, I'm sorry that my sin put you on the cross and I no longer want to be king of my own life. I want you to be my king. So how about you? Are you ready to say thank you? I'm sorry. You are my king. Today can be your day. You want a new life? Are you ready to break the jar, to go all in? Let today be that day. Communion is a reminder that Jesus went all in for us. In the book of Philippians, the Apostle Paul writes that Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. See, Jesus held nothing back. He went all in, and may we hold nothing back from him either. Mm. Let's prepare now to receive communion by remembering Jesus's commitment, and let's express our gratitude for his sacrifice in worship.
Let's celebrate Jesus as we receive the bread, his body broken for us. And let's also celebrate Jesus as we receive the cup, his blood shed for us. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we are so thankful for the truth of your word that has endured from generation to generation and continues to inform how we live our lives today. Thank you for the freedom that's found through your sacrifice, that you have restored us to God. You have given us a hope and a future. And we wanna walk in that this week. And it's in your name, Jesus, I pray this. Amen. Amen. What a great day that it's been here at Community. Yeah, Serene, I couldn't agree more. And if you're following this broadcast in real time, you know that next week is a very special one. It's Easter week. So whether you're joining us for our Good Friday or Easter services online or at one of our locations, head on over to communitychristian.info now to find out about those service times and also everything else that's happening this week at Community. And we'll see you right here next time at Community Online. The one who created with the sound of his voice Scattered the darkness, filled every void He set into motion the rhythms of life You kissed it with beauty and called it all mine I, You called it all mine From the Father with fullness of grace, sent down from glory and given a name. He chose all the lashes, the cross, and the grave. The earth could not hold you, O Lamb that was slain. Holy Spirit, fresh fire.